Hey everybody, before I get started with this video, I just want to preference it by saying I do apologize in advance. My allergies have been kicking my butt and I am a little stuffy throughout this video. Hey everybody, I'm Sean and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, please subscribe and like and I'll see you in the next one. Um, if you're a returning viewer, I do appreciate your time and I hope that I could keep you for a little while longer. So today's video is not a tutorial or a how-to video. It's truly just a Q&A video and I'm going to keep it as short as possible. But I've had several people ask me the same, if not similar questions regarding the Tajima Sai. So I wrote those questions out and if I missed your question, I do apologize. Just ask me in the comments and I'll answer you, okay? But um, the first question um, was why a Tajima Sai? So this is the supplied by Juki version of the Tajima Sai 8 needle. They have it listed as a semi-commercial on some sites. Some sites have it listed as commercial, but it does run well. I've not had any major problems with it. And um, why this machine? Um, it was in my price range for what I wanted. Um, I wanted a machine with a decent reputation. Um, and Juki has a great reputation. Tajima has a great reputation. Full disclosure, I am not being paid in any way. I'm not getting perks or monies or any freebies or anything for doing this video, okay? I'm simply the owner of a machine that I like, okay? I actually like all of my machines. I've not had any major issues with any of them. But because I've gotten so many questions about this one, I decided I would do a video, okay? So getting back to why a Tajima Sai. Honestly, it was not my first choice in the embroidery machine that I wanted. And it wasn't my second choice either. But my first and second choices, they were out of my league price wise. Um, yeah, the, the embroidery machines are not cheap, guys. And so when I was, I kept looking, I searched for probably about three, maybe six months trying to find the machine for me. <laughs> and um, when I, I saw the, the side and it was at a sewing machine dealer. And so I was like, okay, well, let me go ahead and get this one because it was within my price range um, and it would do pretty much what I wanted it to do. So where did I get this machine at? And once again, I am not being paid for this. I'm not a affiliate with this company. Um, no sponsorships at all. I got this machine from Sewing Machines Plus, the company out of California. That is where I got this machine from. And why did I get it from them? Because I didn't realize there were there was a dealer here in the Atlanta Metro that I could have actually ordered it from. I didn't see it on their website. So I went with where I saw that they were actually selling them. So that's why I ended up getting this. And this was two years ago. So with that being said, if you do decide that you're going to get a machine from a sewing machine dealer, um, you know, one of the smaller machines, because a lot of them carry the Tajima Sai, the SWF and a couple of other um, uh, machines, you know, that can get you into the business of embroidery, but not be too big for your house. So call the call the dealers locally to you or closest to you, because some of them will be able to get the machine that you want or carry the machine that you want and you just might not see it on their website but anyways that's why I ended up going with Sewing Machine Plus because it was on their website and I was like okay well let me go ahead and order this so why a multi-needle when I had a perfectly fine running brother single needle my ve my ve 2200 which is called the brother dream maker it is a discontinued model however i've had it for years i take it in to get the annual tune up and everything and it, it runs fine so why a multi-needle two things two reasons the first reason was I was tired of babysitting shirts. Um, it's not always easy, depending on the size, to do a shirt on your home embroidery machine, the, the flatbed embroidery machine, okay? It's not always easy. Um, sometimes you have to 
hold the shirt or pin it to keep it out of the stitch field or to keep it from falling into the stitch field. And I was just tired of that. Okay. The second reason which is how I sold my husband on it. And y'all forgive me because I have not really done it. I wanted to be able to do hats, okay? Baseball caps. I've not done, well, I've tried. I've practiced doing baseball caps like twice and they, I, I got to practice, okay? Um, that is something that I do plan on doing as I'm going to have to just go ahead and start doing that this year for real, because I really only tried doing caps on this machine twice. And I was just like, okay, this, you've got to get your technique down so that you can stitch these caps perfectly. And, um, I understand that, you know, I'm not going to just be like, Oh, this machine doesn't do caps. It does do caps. I've seen other people on YouTube and on TikTok who use their machine solely for baseball caps, the same machine. I know it does caps. I need to practice my technique. And so that's something I'm going to work on this year. Uh, what is the max speed for this machine? The max speed for this machine is 800 stitches per minute. Why do I why do I not run it at max speed? Yeah. So I, I tell you um, in some of the videos, I run somewhere between 600 and 700 as far as how fast my machine runs. And that's on my other machine as well. I don't run max speed because I just look at it the way someone explained to me. If you have a car and you've got 140 on the dash, you're not running that car at 140, right? I mean, unless you're trying to get away from somebody, <laughs> but no, you're not going to run your car at 140. So I'm not going to run my machine at max speed just because, oh, let's push it to the limits. I'm not going to do that. Um, I could see having problems, you know, running it at max speed all the time. Maybe I wouldn't, but I just, I look at it in that perspective. I don't need to run it at max speed. So I just run it at about six to sometimes I will push it to 750, but I don't run it at 800 at all. Okay. Uh, have you had any problems with the machine? Honestly, I've had one problem with this machine and it wasn't a problem with the machine. It was user error. It was me. Um, somehow I got thread tangled up in there and, um, I, my husband and I had to carry it up to the shop in Atlanta to get it fixed. And I probably could have, you know, been walked through it, but I was just like, so frantic, like what in the world did I do? The rotary cuff cup wasn't, um, moving or anything. And so I was just like, okay, got an appointment took it up to the shop and they fixed it. It wasn't a big deal. But if I ever have a major problem again, I will be uh, calling someone to come in. OK, um, maintenance. How is the maintenance on the machine? Maintenance is pretty straightforward. Um, there are some areas that you would unscrew right here and right here so that you could take this down and oil the pads. And then I also you could take this here off so that you go oil at the tops of the needles. You want to oil uh, in there. There's a bar where it like slides back and forth. Let's see if I move. Well, let's go the other way. Okay. So it's on needle one. This here bar, I will oil that just to make sure um, it keeps moving. So that's one, uh, one area. Now I have seen in the book where you have to do your annual maintenance to open it up and everything. I've done a full oil down and greasing on the buy. I've not done that on this machine yet. So that is something that I'm going to have to do. I probably won't do it on camera because I know that it's going to be something that I'm going to need to, um, take my time and read up on as I'm, as I'm going. And so that's what I'll do then. And, um, the next question was, is this machine easy to use? That's a question I truly can't answer. 
uh, because when it comes to ease of use, it's all in the person. Okay. With to me, with any machine that you buy, you have to be willing to be patient and learn the machine. Okay. Yes. I had a single needle and I figured I would jump right into a multi-needle and it would be no problem. And for the most part, it wasn't, um, it wasn't a big problem, a, a little intimidating, making sure everything was threaded correctly. And sometimes if I have my ceiling fan going, the threads will blow and I'm like, what in the world? So anyways, um, ease of use to me is up to the individual because I can't say that it's easy to use for everybody. For me, it wasn't difficult, but at the same time, I'm a fairly patient person <laughs> and um I just learn it you know there are things that are going to happen and I do understand it's just a machine okay um I've had thread breaks I've had bird nests I've had threads come loose and I've had these little um these little pipes or whatever you call them that the threads go through pop right off. And so it's like, well, goodness gracious, there's always something going on. But at the end of the day, it's, you, you got to check your machine before you're using it. Make sure that you're keeping up the maintenance, make sure those little tubes are in place. Um, that's actually only happened to me one time, but it threw me way off because two of them popped at the same time. And I was like, what in the world? But you learn to check things and um, as you learn and you start using it more and more, it will become easier to use if it starts off not being easy to use. So read your owner's manual back and forth and then again, um, find your videos. Um, this machine, there are videos from Tajima Sai that they have, you know, showing you the different things. They don't talk in them. So that was kind of frustrating for me because I am one of those people if it's just playing music and you're not actually telling me, I can't watch your video. And that's probably why I talk so much. So I'm sorry about that. But, you know, there are people who don't talk a whole lot in their videos. Um, but people who don't talk at all, I can't watch the video because it's like, what? reinforce something up here for me while you're showing me. So anyways, ease of use is up to the individual. Uh, someone asks, what is my preferred thread? I don't have a preferred thread. And I think I've said that in a couple of videos. Um, I use almost all the threads out there, <laughs> all the cheap ones anyways. Now I do, I like Madeira. I like the uh, dime uh, design and machine embroidery. Their version of threads are really nice. Um, but I like bro thread as well. So it's like, well, I guess that, you know, your preferred thread is going to be up to the individual as well. I've not had severe breakages because I'm using one type of thread. Um, I know somebody told me that they were using one brand of thread and it broke all the time. I, I've not had that problem with the same brand. So sometimes I think any thread can give you a bad batch, maybe, but I've not had a problem with a lot of the threads that I've tried and I've tried a lot. I mean, coats, SIM threads, Madeira, dimes, Nubro thread. Um, there's something else and I can't think of what it's called, but anyways, I, I've tried about six different brands and to me, they're all the same in the long run. Um, I don't know that they will all hold up the same. So like if it's a thread that I'm not familiar with and I've not personally washed over and over again to see if it fades or anything like that, I don't put it on other people's stuff. Okay. But, um, thread thread's going to be up to you when it comes to what needles I use organ needles or organ needles. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Um, I've misspelled this in a couple of videos and some viewers were like, Oh, I didn't know that brand existed. I always use this brand and spelled it correctly. And I'm like, girl, you know, I misspelled that. <laughs> so anyways, this is the brand of needles that I use. And, um, then the question, the most important question, other than speed, people will ask me, what is the max hoop size for my machine? The max hoop size is 
eight by 12. And so it actually is just a little bit under eight by 12, but eight by 12. And it does fit an adult chest. You can stitch pretty decent. That's one of my little decal shirts, but um, it does stitch pretty decent size on adult shirts, okay? The eight by 12. Next question asks, what is the biggest mighty hoop that you can use? The biggest mighty hoop, even though the machine has a max stitch field, is an eight by 12. The biggest mighty hoop that I can use on this machine is the eight by nine, the kind of square. Um, this is the max hoop frame size for the mighty hoop that you could use on the Tajima side. And I know you're gonna be like, well, if it's an eight by 12, why can't I get those extra inches? And so I talked to mighty hoops or Midwest products who designs these. And I asked them when I first got, I don't know if it was this one or the 5.5, but anyways, I asked them, why can't I use, I think it was a five by 10 that I wanted to get. I'm like, I have enough stitch space. And he's like, no, the thing about these mighty hoops is the, the casing that holds the magnets. You have to, they have to accommodate that, you know, or factor that in with the, the hoop sizes that, you know, they're saying that you could use. So anything bigger than the eight by nine is going to be too big um, as far as the frame for the Tajima Sai. So no, you can't use a bigger frame for that. Okay. Uh, can you program Mighty Hoops into your machine? No. Um, this machine has all the hoops programmed in it that you can program in it. And over here, I'm hoping you can see this. Over here, this is where you would select the hoops and you have tubular one, which is your biggest hoop. Then tubular two is your four by four. You have your cap uh, hoop. You have your pocket hoop. You have a sock hoop. The shoe frame, um, and it has a couple sizes for the shoe frame. The TFAs, TFA, um, that is the green hoops that you see on some of the Tajima machines. But there are a couple of the TFA hoops. You have your 90, your 120, and your 150. Oh, there's 180 as well. But I only tried the smaller ones and I really didn't like them because they were hard. I like the Mighty Hoops a lot better. But then you have the M frame. And so someone was like, oh, M frame, is that magnetic frame? Yes, it does mean magnetic frame. However, this M frame is not for the Mighty Hoop magnetic frame. This M frame setting, and there are three of them. You have the 80 by 140, your 40 by 80, and your 40 by 50. That M frame uh, hoop, that is the magnetic frame that is specifically designed for this machine. And it can be purchased from Juki. So, um, no, you cannot program the mighty hoops into this machine, but you can use them. I can use them. Okay. Let me take that back. I can use them because I've learned how to use the mighty hoops without bumping my needles. Okay. You always do a trace or I always do a trace. Okay. So with this machine, if you, um, Oh, it's not on right now. If I have a design pulled up and I'll just go into the record to set a design and see if I can get that light to come on. Uh, I'm not sure what in the world it's going to trace. Oh, there it goes. So there is a laser light that will come on that red light that you could kind of see on my fingers. So that laser light has a crosshair uh, pattern, just like a crosshair like that. And so the very center of the crosshair is where the needle is going to go down. So when I have a design and actually whether I have mighty hoops on there or if I have um just the regular hoops on there. I trace all of my designs to make sure that 
I'm not going to be bumping any hoops and to make sure that the design is going to be where I want it to be, as well as making sure the design is big enough as far as the area I want to have stitched. So I do always trace my designs before I stitch them for the first time. Hey guys, here I go interrupting my video once again. Um, I forgot to note that when you get a Tajima Sai, the hoops that it comes with are the standard 4x4 as well as the 8x12, okay? Those sizes come with your machine. Now, there is a point in the video where I talk about the TFA hoops, which are these green hoops. And I get these, uh, I got these. Um, I bought them directly from Hirsch, um, who is a Tajima supplier. Um, you, you have to set up an account with them to order with them, but I did order those hoops directly from them. So I just wanted to add that so that I didn't want anybody to think that all the the different hoops that I show as far as the settings, the only ones that actually come with the machine are the 4x4 and the 8x12, okay? The cap driver was a add-on to my order when I bought the machine, and um, like I said, the other hoops are all extra. You have to order those separately. So that is it as far as the questions that I have had regarding the Tajima Sai 8 needle embroidery machine. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, I may have missed something because I just tried to go through the comments of the other videos from my side videos to see what questions people had. But I did cover why I got it, where I got it, and all of that good stuff. Um, that is all I have for you, and I will see you all in the next one.